Sigourney Kyoto football fans, Steve Shuttler Media is teaming up with Clint Dye of Tag Team Photography to bring you coverage of Sigourney Kyoto football this fall. You've seen Clint's fantastic photos of Sigourney Kyoto football over the last few years. And now Clint is bringing those talents to be showcased on Steve Shuttler Media. We're going to have pictures and action shots of each and every game, an in-depth article, and a video highlight of the game as well. You won't miss a thing with Sigourney Kyoto football coverage right here this year on Steve Shuttler Media. Welcome in! It's time for another Real Talk on Steve Shetler Media, brought to us by New Life Community Church in Wellman, where this guy, Aaron Fleming, is the pastor. My name is Steve Shetler. Hi. 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 How are you doing, Steve? I am okay. All right. Well, that's uh, a little less than splendis- splendiferous, but uh, a little bit better than bad. <laughs> It's somewhere in between. Somewhere uh, in between. Well, we're coming to you live from the... Uh, we're not live. Oski Dental Studios. <laughs> we are in the Oski right Dental there. Studio, but this is pre-recorded. <laughs> uh, and it's uh, football season is in full swing by now. Oh, here's a here's an interesting factoid that, uh, that we didn't mention last week. Okay. Um, Florida State lost to Georgia Tech in the first football game of the season. Mm-hmm. Meaning that they became the first team ever to be alone in 17th place in the ACC. <laughs> <laughs> At 0-1. At 0-1. <laughs> and everybody else in the conference was either 1-0, and that would be Georgia Tech, or 0-0. But Florida State had the distinction of, of being alone in 17th place all the way down there in 17th which which just kind of made me giggle a little bit maybe that's not very nice of me but i just don't (laughs) like the florida teams you know florida florida state miami of florida i just don't like them yep yeah how about like nfl do you like tampa bay or miami or uh you hold grudges against them too (laughs) I mean, Tampa Bay, I think I cheered for Tampa Bay back when Tony Dungy was uh, was winning, yeah. winning the Super Bowl there. Uh, is that where he win, won the Super Bowl? Or, or did he win it in Indianapolis? I don't know. Anyway, I always admired Tony John, Dungy a lot, so, so sure. I enjoyed him when he was down at Tampa Bay. And um, so I did not cheer for them when Tom Brady was there. <laughs> Uh, not a huge Tom Brady fan. I I gotta admit he was the best in the world. Oh yeah, like he is the goat. <laughs> so yeah, football football's in full swing. This is pre recorded, so we don't yeah. know yet if uh, if Iowa won its opening game. <laughs> they better have. <laughs> <laughs> if they if they did not, we will travel in time back to the present. What? And I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the future. Or this is real talk, and I would like to admit that I really don't have any idea what we're talking about at this point. We're really lost. Moving along. Moving along. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> last last week we were talking about statements of faith, um, speaking the promises of God. And praising God for fulfilling His promises even before they're fulfilled, mm-hmm. which uh, which we acknowledge as challenging, might make us feel a little bit like a poser or a uh, uh, an imposter. It's one of my favorite words these days: imposter syndrome. Uh, just that feeling that I don't fit in, or that I'm putting on a mask and trying to do something uh, that I don't really have the skill and ability to do. You ever? Ever have a situation like that in your life? We really ought to tell a story. Um, oh, man. Because you're a good storyteller. This, if I remember your statements last week. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's Imposter syndrome is really common in the writing community. You hear authors talk about it all the time. Like you write a book and you're like, wow, that's really good. And then somebody says, yeah, you ought to share that with the rest of the world. And you're like, ah. <laughs> what if I suck? Oh no! Uh, and 
And realistically speaking, you're probably not the next George R. R. Martin. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're you're probably not going to be adapted for for television. Um, and have Game of Thrones make you a gazillion dollars. Uh, yeah. Just realistically speaking, very few of us are going to get to the top of the New York Times bestseller list. But that doesn't mean that you're not a real writer. Mm-hmm. Um, here's, here's a really fun story. I don't know if I've ever told you this one. Uh, back when I was in good enough shape to run 5Ks, I went to a 5K in Wellman. You know, just a little, there were 40 or 50 runners maybe. And I, I met an older guy that I, I knew a little bit like I'd be out running on a gravel road and he'd be out running on a gravel road. And he was in his late 60s, I think. And he had never run a 5K before. Okay. So he shows up and he was talking to me and he was nervous. And and uh, so I asked him, well, like, what's your goal, man? And he said, well, I'd really, I'd really like to average 11 minute miles. Okay. Which uh, for, for most high school athletes... That's fairly slow, right? But if you're in your late 60s and you've never run a 5K before, yeah. that's really not too shabby. Mm-hmm. But but I could clearly see that he was dealing with a full-blown case of imposter syndrome. You know, okay. I don't belong here. I'm too old. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm slow. Everyone else will be faster than me. All of those thoughts running through his head. So I just gave him a few pointers. He knew I was a coach, and, and so I just gave him a few pointers. Um, dude ended up running like 3120. Yeah, nice. Well, well under 11 minute miles. And so there's there's another case, running, jogging, exercising where where people who aren't in good shape feel like an imposter uh before they start. Um, you know, you look at all the you go to the gym or whatever and you see oh, yeah. all these slim, muscular, beautiful young people and if I ever was slim and muscular and beautiful, <laughs> I maybe ain't that way so much anymore. And it really wants, makes you want to just turn around and walk out of the room, right? Oh, yeah. Um, imposter syndrome. I know lots of people feel that way when they think about going to church for uh, the first time or for the first time in a long time. Um, and, and you get comments when you're a pastor, like, well, you know, I, sh- I shouldn't come to your church. The whole building would probably burn down. Uh, for, for one thing, you're probably not that bad of a sinner. Yeah. Um, I mean, sin is bad and we've all sinned. All sin is bad. Uh, but you don't, you don't know. When you walk into a church, you don't know what everybody else has been through, what they've done, what's been done to them. Um, and you feel out of place. You feel like you're the weird one. You feel like you're the one who's sinned so much that God doesn't want to have anything to do with you anymore. But you don't know who's there and what they've been through. Um, and maybe they look like they have a really nice life. And maybe they do. But you don't know where they were 20 or 30 years ago and and what kind of challenges or difficulties they faced and came through with the help of God. So um, one of the things that I just kind of wanted to dip into this week is is talking about community and with our church anniversary coming up in mm-hmm. just not very long. I want to join. ask everybody, uh, if you don't have a church already, please join us on September 15th. It's uh, the celebration of our 17th anniversary, and we're going to have a whole bunch of stories. Uh, I'm not going to preach real long. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we're still working on getting Steve, the voice Shetler, to maybe join us on the worship team for that Sunday. Contract negotiations are ongoing. <laughs> Yeah, there's a couple of things in Steve's rider that are that are were blue M and M's only, <laughs> <laughs> peeled well, grapes only. Peel- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty weird, folks. But uh, we we might be able to accommodate the blue M and M's thing. I don't know if we're gonna peel grapes for you, Steve. Uh, but we will have a we'll have a potluck. We'll have lots of stories. I'm not gonna preach real long. We'll have fun music. Um, but part of my message is, is going to be just this, a little snippet from Isaiah chapter 54, verse 2 says, Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. And, and the purpose of that, like, why do you want a bigger tent? 
You asking me? Or are you just asking in general? No, I'm asking in general, but maybe okay. you'll answer. <laughs> Put Steve on the spot today. <laughs> Why would you want a bigger tent? I mean, bigger is always better. More, more room for more people. I don't know. Well, if you ever went camping, uh, did, did you ever have one of those uh, two-man pop tents? Oh, yeah. They were orange, usually orange. All the ones I ever saw were orange. Did you ever sleep with four guys in one of those <laughs> two-man pup tents? I think I was uh, lucky enough to avoid that. So. <laughs> yeah, you'd be well, piled on top of each other. I had, I had the great misfortune of spending a night in a tent with uh, myself and, and uh, Dave and Adam and Paul. And they're being generous when they say two-man pup tent. <laughs> if the two men are both the sides of pups... That could work. Yeah, yeah. It was just very, very crowded. Um, we did, it was, here's another crowded camping scenario. Same four guys, I think. Uh, although there may have been a fifth. I can't remember. So we went camping up on up on this bluff near where I lived. And uh, it was cold. Like it got down to 36 of that, that night. Okay. Um, we did not have a tent. Everybody had a sleeping bag. We got so cold that what we did is we just, we opened up all of our sleeping bags, <laughs> laid one on the ground, and then all four of four or five of us got on that sleeping bag. And then we laid the other three or four sleeping bags on top of us. <laughs> so kind of a uh, four or five guys, we were probably you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. So four or five guys all under the same blanket. And, but we were on a hill. Like not a real steep hillside, okay. but over the course of an hour, when you're sleeping on a slippery or sleep, yeah, sleeping on a slippery sleeping bag. Say that five times fast. Sleeping on a sleep, <laughs> sleeping on a slippery <laughs> sleeping bag on a slope. Yeah, a slippery slope. <laughs> And uh, so, so you'd slide downhill feet first and your feet would come out from under the blankets and you'd wake up because it was so stinking cold and then kind of, you know, we're way, way back, back up. <laughs> <laughs> One of the worst, most miserable nights of my life. So you would want, in that scenario, a bigger and warmer tent because mm -hmm. uh, it holds more people. That's why you want a bigger tent. Yeah. That's why God is saying, stretch out your tent curtains. You're going to have to proactively do some things to create community. You know what? I'm, I'm not entirely sure about this because I wasn't alive 80 years ago. I think 80 years ago, community was just easier to come by. People had, and now we're going to go down to nostalgia lane and yeah. think about all the good old days when people had front porches and everybody sat out on their front porch. And they did because they didn't have air conditioning. Mm -hmm. And that's why, that's where front porches came from. Like they would block a little sun to keep your house a little cooler and then you could sit out there and maybe catch a breeze. And then and then neighbors would come by. And um, I do have, I have a, a couple that live just a couple of do doors down from me in Wellman and they sit out on their porch. And okay. people come by and stop and talk. Yeah. So if you can imagine. What if, a concept. Yeah. Yeah. If we were all sitting on our front porch instead of all sitting in our air conditioned house, <laughs> like just the opportunity for community and connection would be higher just from that one little thing. Um, but, but we're kind of in a space culturally where we really do have to proactively do some things to stretch ourselves to go out of our way to create community. It doesn't just happen anymore. And did it 80 years ago? Like, I don't know. We tend to look at the past and think everything was hunky-dory and peaches and cream. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. doesn't matter because here we are. Um, so one of the things that we've worked really hard at at New Life in Wellman is to create community and to create spaces where people can come in. One of the things that I like to do at the beginning of a sermon is, is uh, make people do a show of hands. Like how many of you have such and such a problem with how many of you have made really dumb financial decisions? <laughs> Everybody raises yeah. their, and, and people want to do it like this. They're like, yeah. No, 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 no. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. How many of you have made really dumb financial decisions? <laughs> now look around. Yeah. Oh, everybody in this room. We'll talk about marriage in a couple of weeks. Uh, marriage and sexuality. How many of you ever made any really dumb 
mistakes while you were dating. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, raise them high, keep them up, <laughs> keep them up. Okay. Everybody in the room that's ever dated has made dumb mistakes and, and, uh, we feel stupid. We feel like we're the only one, uh, uh, and we're not, but we got to do some things to make some space in our lives to let other people know us. And so that we can know other people, um, or it, or it just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Just doesn't happen. Facebook is a powerful tool. You're doing some cool things with, with sports, uh, and, and music that kind of creates some community in the Facebook space. Yeah. Um, talk yeah. about that a little bit. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, you're talking like, you know, my football coverage and my, uh, sports coverage on Saturday mornings, which which brings in a variety of coaches and athletes and uh, different people from the community to talk about different sports and from different communities. Um, you know, my music show, the Iowa Music Showcase on Friday, uh, bring in a different uh, musical artist from somewhere in Iowa. Always varies, and then it's, it's also a nice barn wired is a nice place for people to congregate and come and and watch it each week. It got some regulars and some people just stumble in, but yeah, it's uh, it brings people together that wouldn't necessarily be together otherwise. So, yeah, and and I I love that about what you're doing. And so often Facebook gets a a bad rap for being divisive and for you know either people bickering and arguing with each other or just unfollowing each other or unfriending each other and kind of getting into their own personal silo um but but every tool i th i think every tool can be used for a good purpose or a bad purpose so i just i love i love what you're doing and how you're giving um you're giving local or regional artists the opportunity to connect with an audience cuz like Mm -hmm. How many people make it in Nashville? Yeah. Like as a percentage of the yeah. people that... Not good. It's, <laughs> it's not a good not a good percentage. Yeah. Uh, and, and that doesn't mean that they're not good musicians. It just means that they didn't hit the yeah. right place oh, at yeah. the right time. Everything has the, to line up. Yeah. And, and so I, I think... Um, one of the dangers of the media world that we live in is that it narrows the focus on onto the few a few superstars in in sports or music or or whatever there's just this really narrow focus on a few celebrities but but with with uh, if if we like talking about all of us here in southeast Iowa, if we will stretch out our tent curtains and make space for one another in our lives, we can use some of these tools. Whether it's your front porch or a fire pit pit that you've got in your backyard, I recently built a fire pit. It's oh. pretty simple, but now I'm starting to have people over for hot right. dogs and s'mores and stuff like that. Uh, it's something I wanted to do for. 15 years and I just never did it. Yeah. Um, and now I did it and people are coming over. Um, so yeah, whether it's a fire pit in your backyard or, uh, your Facebook page or what you're doing in media, like, like Steve's doing in media. Um, there's just so much opportunity in these times. So I think we'll wrap it up there. Just, uh, another thank you to Oski dental for providing the studio for us. And, uh, yeah, there we are. Um, thank you to, uh, new life for sponsoring this spot. Thanks to all of you for watching. If you would say hi or, or make a comment, ask us a question, give us a, give us a topic that you'd like us to cover here on real talk and we'll get around to it. All right. Well, Aaron, have a great week and we'll see you back here next Monday for real talk again, brought to us by new life community church in Wellman here on Steve Shuttler media.